Hello students, in this video we'll prove that every monotone function is Riemann integrable. Let's suppose that f is increasing, the decreasing case is similar, is increasing on a, b. In other words, that's generically a monotone function, right? So in other words, f is monotone on a, b. And so then what I want to do is I want to let epsilon be greater than zero. We claim f is Riemann integrable. Okay, so here's the proof of that claim. Let's let epsilon be greater than zero. Proof. Let epsilon be greater than zero. And then what I want to do is I want to pick a partition of the interval AB such that what? Let's call it partition P, which is going to be x0, x1, all the way up to xn, okay? Such that the maximum over all i less than or equal to j less than or equal to n of points in this partition xj minus xj minus 1. I can make this as small as I wish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this less than epsilon over f of b minus f of a. Now since f is increasing, f of b is going to be greater than f of a. If f of b was equal to f of a, then f is constant. We know that constant functions are integrable, so we're going to rule that case out. We'll assume that f of b is greater than f of a, and that this way this quantity in the denominator is well defined. I can always make this the, make this the case. I'll make the partition smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller if I wish. Okay? Again, here we're assuming that f of a is strictly less than f of b. Otherwise, it's trivial. Otherwise, otherwise f is a constant and the proof is trivial because the upper sum is equal to the lower sum for every choice of partition. Okay? Okay? Good? All right. So now what happens now? So for such a partition, what's going to happen? For such a partition, let's look at the upper sum f on that partition minus the lower sum f on that partition. Well, what will this be? This is going to be the supremum, which is going to be the sum, j goes from 1 to n, of the supremum from xj minus 1 to xj of the function f minus the infimum of f on the interval xj minus 1 to xj. Okay? Times what? xj minus xj minus 1. Now we're in a position to say that I can estimate this xj minus xj minus 1 by what? I know the largest that can be is epsilon over f of b minus f of a, and that doesn't depend on j anymore. So I can estimate this by pulling that out less than epsilon over f of b minus f of a times the sum, j goes from 1 up to n, of the supremum of f over the interval xj minus 1 to xj minus the infimum xj minus 1 to xj of the function f. Now we know the function's increasing, so this is going to be what? This supremum occurs at f of xj minus f of xj minus 1, because it's increasing, so the infimum occurs at the left endpoint. So the supremum occurs at the right endpoint, the infimum occurs at the left endpoint because you're an increasing function, and so what this becomes is becomes the following. This is just no more than this is equal to epsilon over f of b minus f of a times the sum j goes from 1 to n of f of j minus f of j minus 1. And that sum telescopes to what? This sum over here is going to telescope to f of b minus f of a. And that f of b minus f of a will cancel that over there, and we'll just get that this is actually equal to epsilon. So for any epsilon, I was able to construct a partition such that ufp minus lfp is less than epsilon, which shows that any increasing function is automatically Riemann integrable. And as a very neat consequence of this, let me just remind you of the fact that, recall, that increasing functions can have countably many 
discontinuities. Which means that in some sense, as long as it's in the right sort of in the right right number, that there are Raymond integrable functions that have countable number of discontinuities. So Raymond integrability is allowing us to actually absorb some discontinuity in, in, in the definition of integrability. So integrability is a very, very sort of a very wide collection of functions because it is allowed to capture some discontinuity in the function because increasing functions are Raymond integrable and increasing functions are allowed to have a countable number of discontinuities. So we'll see in future videos what classifies the idea of Raymond integrability in terms of the number of, uh, the number of discontinuities and in some sense the overall size of the set of discontinuities. Thank you very much.